As Google I.O. wraps up, it's time to get to know the latest beta version of Android Q. The third beta is officially now Android version 10, and with the official version number, we're getting a better feel for how Q will look when it's released in August. So first of all, the dark theme that you had to go digging for on the settings in earlier betas now lives behind its own item in the quick settings menu. The look of Android's baked-in night mode hasn't changed all that much from past versions of Q, and remember, apps will still need to be updated to take advantage of the new night mode toggle. Right now, only a few of Google's own apps even support it, but when apps are updated, they'll look something like this. Nevertheless, this is good news all round for fans of that darker aesthetic, which of course comes with the bonus of battery power saving on OLED screens. Next, there are yet more changes to Android's gesture navigation system. In QBeta 3, you can continue to use the neutered version of the swipey pixel pill navigation bar from Beta 2, or the classic three-button setup that's still used by many non-pixel phones today. But the new option is what's really making headlines, because it's pretty much just a straight-up clone of the iPhone's virtual home button. It's all based around this swipeable bar down below. Swipe up to go home, swipe and hold to view recent apps and then you can scroll through them as before, or swipe left and right along the bar itself to quickly change apps. The back button is gone, and so you now swipe inward from the left or right bezel to go back, just like on some Huawei phones. Which is absolutely infuriating in the many apps that still use slider menus, the so-called hamburger menus. And that's a lot of apps, including basic stuff like the Google Play Store here. The whole setup feels clunky, and obviously there's still some work to be done to make this feel as natural as some of the other gesture navigation methods. I'm not a huge fan of it, but hey, three months to go, still plenty of time for things to change. The next feature is not something we can really show you specifically, but arguably this is the most important change in Android Q in terms of security. Project Mainline changes the way Android's internals work to allow security patches to be pushed from phones directly from Google, without the device manufacturer getting involved. It's an extension of Project Treble, which was introduced a couple of versions ago to speed up firmware updates, and obviously this is a huge important step in tackling one of Android's big inbuilt weaknesses compared to iOS. By making Android more modular, Google can patch vulnerabilities more quickly after they emerge and keep everyone's devices more safe. Next, Smart Reply will be coming to all messaging apps in Android Q. This has been coming for a while, but now Google's predictive responses should be available regardless of which chat app you're using, thanks to on-device machine learning magic. This is another thing that isn't actually live yet in the current build, but when it does, it'll look something like what we've already seen. Something else not quite live yet is the focus mode. A big new feature in Google's digital well-being suite, focus mode lets you mark apps that are likely to distract you, so you can still use your phone, just with fewer interruptions. Basically, it's a way to filter out some of the noise and focus on what actually matters to you. And in a related change, Google's mixing up notification management a little bit here with this new UI to quickly and easily change how disruptive certain kinds of notifications can be. That's all done using the notification channel system that's been with us since Android Oreo. Finally, Android Q will take advantage of Google's machine learning chops once again to bring instant live captions to any and all video content on the device. This is done locally, on the fly, using technology similar to what YouTube already has to automatically generate live captions from its videos. It's a pretty big deal in terms of convenience, but also hugely important to make Android more accessible to everyone. And just as important as all these new features is the expansion of the Android beta program itself. New companies like Huawei, Asus, and LG are joining the Q beta program, which is great, and hopefully signals faster updates for many of their devices. Just be aware that beta builds for non-Pixel phones are likely to be buggier and less feature complete than what you'll see on a Google device. And finally, it's time to pour one out for the couple of features that have been killed off in Beta 3, the Scope Storage feature from earlier versions of Q that was supposed to limit the access that apps have to your local storage has been postponed for a future version of Android. A lot of developers voiced concerns online this would break important functionality in apps, so the can's been kicked down the road. And RIP Android Beam. For reasons that are still unclear right now, the ability to share photos or URLs over NFC by tapping your phone to a friend's device will be removed in the new version. It's not clear why, but TechRadar has confirmed at Google I.O. that Beam is being killed off in queue, yet another feature for the Google graveyard. So that's it for now in terms of new stuff in queue this May. Stick with us in the months ahead for the final stretch of beta builds. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.